you up to speed on, on what has transpired the past two or three hours. As you all know, over in the D.P. Cove University Center, there's a massive renovation project underway. Um, earlier today, there was an altercation between some of the employees who are working there. These were not employees of the university. These were contractors part of the project. There was an altercation between some of them, and at some point, one of the uh, persons involved in the altercation left the scene and uh, made reference to possibly or allegedly having a weapon. We have not confirmed that at this time. At that point, once we became aware of that, out of an abundance of caution, we felt it was important to get this person into custody, so we did issue uh, our various emergency alert systems, which includes gold alert, uh, the, the siren was the sound, and we initiated our alert systems. Um, we asked the campus community to shelter in place, which means to stay indoors where they were. We began a very active search for the suspect. We worked closely with our partners with the John City Police Department, and with a short period of time, the suspect was apprehended. It's important to note that during this entire event, no gunshots were fired. I think that was reported some places, but again, no gunshots were fired. Uh, uh, we do have a suspect in uh, custody, and we were able to uh, issue an all clear uh, relatively soon after the initial alert was issued. So, uh, Chief Collins, anything else you'd like to add to this? I'd like to add that uh, in close collaboration with the Johnson City Police Department, we were able to apprehend the suspect. Again, it, it's an opportunity to, to show that you know our alert systems do work. We have a great relationship with our regional law enforcement partners, and the situation was critical with the John City Police Department. So that's what we know right. Now. Kind of evolving as we speak. So, um, any questions, Heather? The alert system is this the first time you've used it, and how do you guys think that it worked in this situation? It's not the first time we've had the, uh, used the alert system. We've had this alert system um, for since about 2007. Now we've added different elements to it with the um, linking it with social media with an alertist which comes on the web page. Uh, so we have used it in the past. Normally it's not involved with siren. A lot of times it's been involving um, hazardous weather. There have been some situations where there was an internet threat to campus where we have used it. That being said, yes, we're really pleased with how it worked. Do you know when the last time you had to use the alarm system was? If I recall, um, there has been a couple of instances where there were tornado warnings in the surrounding counties. Um, I'm recalling a time back in May of 2017, I believe, where there were some tornadoes around us and they were um, issued then. There are times that we have used other parts of the alert system that didn't involve the siren, but specifically for the siren, the one that I recall, um, the one that I recall was around May 2017. Okay, what about a time, in, like you said, where there seemed to be an imminent threat to campus that wasn't weather? Yeah, there, there was an instance a few years ago, if, if I recall, where there was a, a suspect who was involved in an off-campus uh, situation. The suspect was believed to have been coming near campus, and at that point, we did issue the alert just to be on the lookout for that person. And do you know what year that is, or do you have to check? So um, the timeline is that around 11.47 is when our dispatch received a phone call of an assault and uh, the all clear was about an hour later. Okay, and that's when he was apprehended, apprehended about? Okay. Yes. yes. Do you know, are you releasing the name of the man yet? I, I don't have the name. We do have the name Mr. Cross. I can't say what it's, I believe Alexander Cross. Do you, do you know how to spell his last name, I'm sorry? C-O-S-S. -S. Okay. Do you know the name of the company that he was contracting doing work for? Um, Tap and Fry. Yeah. Tap and Fry. Tap and Fry. Is that T A F F? Is that yes. Yes. Tap and Fry. Is, okay. is there a reason that the alert starts with the siren instead of the message? Um, a lot of that's done automated at the same time. So when you when you craft the message. Um, those alerts kind of happen at different places. Now, uh, the siren did go first. Um, that's, how, that's what I was told, at least. So, yes, that is something that's going to be a, a large mass notification system that's going to catch a lot of people as quickly as possible. But the other elements of the alert system came into play pretty quickly afterward. Do you uh, have any charges placed on this man at this time? So the John City Police Department makes yes. a charge, right? No, we did. Um, Eastern, Eastern State University Police Department is charged for assault. 
guy. Do you have any other information about the man? Like how old he is? Mid twenties. Mid twenties. So when you're sending out these alerts, is there like a threshold? How do you decide like when you send out a campus alert or whether you just send out a text or a tweet? Like how do you right. get to the level that you needed to do the siren? So there, I think you look at each situation individually, case by case basis. Clearly, if there is a situation like today where there's an imminent threat, there could be a suspect on the loose, then absolutely we're going to activate all elements of the siren system. Now another time we have used the alert system a much lower degree was like when we've had uh, inclement weather in schools campus. So then the, the email and the other alert elements will work. But to answer your question, um, when we clearly see there is an imminent threat to campus, then absolutely we're going to use every means available to communicate. You mentioned that there's several elements of this uh, alert system. So are you referring to the text that the students were receiving, web alerts? Can you just like break down? Sure, I'll do, do my best. So there is, of course, the siren, which is um, a, a large element of that. Then we do have a text alert system that goes out. Now you have to subscribe to what's the gold alert system. And we frequently throughout the year encourage people to sign up for this. So there's the text system. There are emails. There are, there's an alertist that comes on your, your screen. So if you're logged into an ETSU account, it's going to come up as well. There are also sirens in some individual buildings. So it's a very complex system. It's one that's grown uh, through the years as, as we've um, relied on our emergency notification systems. Right, so I mean, with a large amount of new students on campus, first day of school, I mean, do you have any idea how many students overall were not signed up for that alert system? I don't have that data, no, but I do know that it's something that our efforts to educate them about the importance of signing up for that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. And did you send out that notification of, hey, this is the alert system we have? Did you send that out before school started, like before in the summer where they so were preparing yeah, to enroll? So there are orientation sessions throughout yes. the summer, yes, and they're educated about that as well. And I would imagine that we'll probably today have more inquiries about how to sign up for it for those who weren't aware of it. And if I can add on the uh, sirens, there is a big voice announcement. So for those who may not have received a text, they heard it through the intercom system. For students who were on campus during the event but didn't hear the siren go off if they came later, were there police around for them to go to? Yes, police were actively out. Whose decision actually is it to send out an alert and what level, um, you know, and, and how many elements of that alert to engage? So can we have a... a Chief Collins is involved in that. We have an emergency uh, management team. There's also a group of us that work closely together that assemble when these crisis events happen. So I think today this was a decision made by a group that we had the information, we realized quickly we need to move forward with the alert. Can anybody sign up for these alerts through the website or is it just students, just people affiliated with ETSU? My understanding it's, it's an option for, the stu for students, faculty, and staff. Staff, yes. okay. But if you're not affiliated with ETSU, you just live in Johnson City, can you sign up for it? Is there a way to? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. The way I'm, I, my understanding is it's, it's a service for the campus community. Gotcha. You just mentioned there probably be a lot of questions today about how to sign up for this service. Um, maybe walk, walk us through how exactly you do sign up for that for parents that might be wondering for their kids. So sure, there, there is a website that we have, an emergency site that there's a link you go to, and it's something you can do just under a minute online. You just provide your contact information, and it's, it can be under a minute. As soon as they log into the website, go for this, um, there, they can click on it to go through the process. I'm sorry, and it Gold allows, Alert? Go to her. Yeah. And it allows multiple phones to be uh, included as well. So was there anybody in the call center at the time who was uh, staying in place for them as well? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about Yes, that. there were. Was the main call close to campus, or was he, do you know where he was apprehended at? He was apprehended off campus. Off campus. Do you know the street, or as far as the location? Um, I'm not sure the location. It was a couple miles off. Couple, okay, a couple miles. You mentioned, too, that the man said, threatened that he had the weapon, uh, and you still, you said there was never a gunshot fire or anything right. like that. But was it ever known what kind of weapon that man did have, what kind of capabilities he had to do violence? We just knew that there was a possibility of a, of a gun, but no description. Mm -hmm. of the but did type. he like search, they search the vehicle or anything like that? Did they find anything? Anyway? Well, he's been apprehended and arrested, so the search wasn't, and he did confess. Oh, he did. And Jackson, it's again, when you go back with information like that, out of an abundance of caution, you know, we took the steps we did. Uh, didn't wait for any kind of confirmation. We, we went with what we had and, and made the decisions that we did. Did things go smoothly? Did you hit any snags, or did it progress pretty well? All in all, all in all, I mean, with the emergency alert system, I think it, everything worked well. We have the system in place. 
You know, this is something that we have conversations throughout the year about emergency preparedness and what will we do if and when. And so clearly, this is an example that shows this system does work that we have in terms of emergency notifications. Is it possible to make that emergency notification system an opt-out system rather than an opt-in? And might you consider that in the future? Um, I'm not sure what the opt-in would be with it. Yeah. Because I know, like talking to some students, I was in one of the classroom buildings, I forget which to be honest, um, and there were students that were saying that there were still people wandering around on the street that might not have heard the original alert, maybe didn't check their email, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I think you might have a lot of people asking why students automatically enrolled in this, because if there was a potentially more dangerous situation, there were kids still wandering around outside. you'll always see us be diligent about educating uh, students about about the system, about the importance of opting in for it. And I think clearly, um, if they hear about what happened today, they're going to understand the importance of it. So I